Newton's second law is very useful in helping us with dynamic situations. So in other words, when things end up moving, or maybe they don't, but uh, when we're considering forces as well. So what I'd like to do is uh, give you Newton's second law, and I'm going to give it to you in two forms. And uh, this one, I think, is actually the best one, uh, which goes like this. So it's F, and I'm going to put a little net here. That's going to imply, like we were looking at before, an unbalanced force. That's actually the change in momentum over a change in time. This right here, this is the, yeah, this is Newton's second law. So maybe we should define things here. So again, uh, this one right here, we've got F net. That's the resultant or unbalanced force. So the key thing here, because we would have to add up all the different forces acting on some object. And in the end, if there's an unbalanced force, then we have a net force. Um, oops, I guess I shouldn't say forces unbalanced force. Now this net force, well that's measured in newtons or kilogram meters per second squared I guess, but we could, uh, we'll, we'll see some of those units we can use. So delta P, that represents a change in momentum. Now momentum is a quantity that is equal to, uh, well maybe we'll just put this off to the side here, that momentum is actually m times v. In other words, the mass of an object times its velocity. Momentum is technically a vector, so we should probably put little uh, vector signs on top of it. And it turns out, well, it's right here, it's right here, and it's right here. I have to be careful with the vector signs here. So this is a change in momentum. Now if you look at this though, if momentum is equal to mass times velocity, well, that means then that the momentum will have units of, let's see, units of mass are kilograms and units of velocity are meters per second. So if that's the case, then this is the unit of momentum. And of course we have delta T, well, that's a change in time. And that will be measured in, well, normally in seconds or just S for short. So that's F net equals delta P over delta T. That's Newton's second law. What this tells you then, this is the, the meaning of it, is that if you have a resultant force, well, that means then that you're going to have a change in momentum, which means a force can cause a change in speed or velocity. So earlier when I had said that C forces were all about, you know, applying a change in uh, velocity, this is why. Now the the version that a lot of students have learned, so instead of this version right here, a lot of students have actually learned this way. They've learned F equals MA. This one's a bit limited if you just write it like this. I'd like to say F net equals MA first of all. So again, F net is still your resultant or unbalanced force. That's still the same. But um, if we look at this then, we could say then that um, well, M is the mass, and that's measured in kilograms. And we've got A, that's the acceleration, and that's measured in meters per second squared. So MS to the minus two. This is the version that a lot of students have uh, used instead. And if I want to be careful here, I need to make sure I have my vector symbol. So force is a vector and acceleration is a vector, but mass is a scalar, just like time is a scalar. Remember, vector means has a direction and a magnitude. So that means it has a value and it has to point somewhere. And the acceleration will be pointing in the same direction as the net force. So what this tells you, again, it's just a different formulation of this one. And this one says the same sort of thing. If you have an unbalanced force acting on something, then it's going to cause an acceleration, which means again, acceleration is actually defined as the change in velocity. Don't forget that. So acceleration is actually the change in velocity or a change in time. So you see again, an acceleration causes a change in velocity. Now, if you like the calculus notation, you could actually say that the acceleration at a function of time here is actually going to be, well, we could say here the derivative of V versus T. 
This is just how we can write it in calculus form. This just tells us that uh, it's the derivative of velocity versus time. In other words, you have to find an equation for velocity and take its time derivative. Well, that's just another way of saying dv dt like this, delta v delta t. But I digress. This right here is the key thing here, knowing that a net force causes a change in velocity, either because it's through a momentum term here or because it's acceleration. But it's actually the same thing going on. It's just a different formulation, just a different version of the same thing happening. So I thought uh, maybe we could take a look at an example. Um, so I've got an example here. It's a little bit silly, but hey, why not? Um, I don't want to just have a regular box rolling down a hill or a box being you know, moved. So, um, well, we've got a velociraptor here. This is not at all realistic because, of course, velociraptors lived millions of years ago on Earth. And, uh, well, this is now, so velociraptor couldn't really be riding a bike. But uh, we're going to assume that velociraptors are dragging Mitch with a force of 20 newtons to the right. Now friction is going to act on me um, with 5 newtons to the left. So if my mass is 75 kilograms, what will be my acceleration? So in this case, the key to doing this is to send, well, first of all, to do a free body diagram maybe of me. So if this is me here, so this will be like this. I'm not a very good artist, so I'm just going to assume that these forces are just going to be acting on me like this. So. Technically, I've got a downwards force of gravity, and I've got an upwards force of, well, normal force. But the good news is those cancel each other out, so that's no problem. But I'm also being given a force applied to me, a force that's 20 newtons to the right. So if that's the case, then I'm going to draw one that's, well, I don't know how much 20 newtons is. Let's say it's that much. Actually, that's not very accurate because my downwards force should actually be lots. But oh well, let's just let's just focus on this one to the right here. So we're going to say that force is 20 newtons to the right. But of course, while I'm dragging on the ground, there's also friction. I mean, if you've ever tried dragging, uh, I, don't, I don't know, a younger sibling, you know, along the ground, or if you've ever, you know, tried rubbing your hands together really fast, you'll see that your hands actually heat up. Or let's say you're on a carpet and someone sort of drags you along the carpet. The carpet makes you get really warm wherever it is that the carpet is touching. And that's because of friction. So friction is a way of, well, friction opposes the motion. So in this case, if I'm being dragged to the right, then friction will act opposite to that. So I should draw a small little arrow to the left. Small, because 5 newtons is a lot smaller than 20. In fact, well, it should be exactly four times less big, but uh, I don't think that's exactly accurate, but good enough. So the idea behind this then is to try to look at, well, what's the net force? Or if I go back here, what's the unbalanced force? Because it's very possible that these two forces would be equal. What if I said the forward force is 20 newtons, but friction acts 20 newtons to the left? Well, then I wouldn't have an unbalanced force. I would have a balanced force because they would cancel each other out. And because of that, I would not be accelerating because there would be no net force. In this case, however, they're not equal. So you can actually then figure out which one wins. Well, the one that's biggest wins. So we know that uh, it's 20 newtons is the one that wins. And 20 minus 5 is going to be 15 newtons to the right. So that will be my, therefore, F net equals 15 newtons to the right. So it's going to be as if this velociraptor is dragging me to the right with a force of 15 newtons. So now the question is, what is my acceleration? Well, I could either use the first equation or the second equation for Newton's second law. I'd probably use the second one just because it already has an acceleration term in it. So it's, it's pretty easy to use then. So I say F net equals MA. And it's always a good idea to show your teachers or whoever it is you're looking at, or maybe just for your own notes, it's a good idea to write down the equation you're using. So F net equals MA. And therefore, if I want the acceleration, well, A equals F over M. F net, of course. So in that case, then I have my net force is 15 newtons to the right divided by 75 kilograms. And then I'll just get out my trusty calculator, and I need to actually calculate this. So I need to do 15, so 1, 5, divided by 7, 5. I press enter, and I get an answer of 0 
So that means then that I could state with certainty then that my acceleration will be 0 0.2 meters per second squared. And it's important to state the direction. So this means I will accelerate an acceleration of 0.2 meters per second squared. And you might think, is that is that a big number? I mean, it doesn't seem like it, but how big is it? Well, I always like to compare things to an acceleration that we all know very well, which is 9.81. That's the sort of magic number that, you know, if I jumped off a cliff or something like that, that would be my acceleration going down. So this is actually quite small. So I wouldn't be accelerating that that much.